Hi, bathtubbers. It's Rosie here. Welcome to Manifestation Bathtub, our weekly show where we teach you how to manifest things from the bathtub. This week, we'll be talking about how to manifest things at Disneyland or Harry Potter World, wherever you prefer to go. <laughs> we went to both places this weekend because we were celebrating our, um, we were celebrating all of the amazing people who are coming in to work with us. Uh, starting this week, starting today actually, we're starting our coaching calls with a lot of these people. We've got, uh, I don't even know how many people, 18, 19 people coming on to be Volcano Coaches. Uh, we're super excited and we wanted to just have one weekend of fun, fun, fun before we got started. So, for today's bathtub, hi Claire, we are going to be using, let's see here, one of these lovely bath bombs that our friend Una sent us. How about a sinus relief, sinus congestion relief. I've already got bubbles in here so you guys won't really be able to see what's happening. All right, I'm just waiting for Kit. <laughs> All right. How do I get in? I will put something up over the screen when you get in, so people can't see your uh, manly parts. Ooh, okay, it's really full. Oh, now I gotta pop in. How's everybody doing today? Hi, Deborah. Who likes my Minnie Mouse hat? You guys like this? We had a, we had a great weekend um, at Disneyland and at Hogwarts. Okay, so ready? I'm gonna let Kit pop in. Oh. Overflow. Get in. Just get in. Woo! You are real naked. All right. I'm gonna let the water out. Try to scoot down a little if you can. Hi! Real naked. <laughs> All right, guys. Welcome to Manifestation Bathtub. Hi. Today we're talking about um, it's it's why ceremony works according to Lynn McTaggart in The Power of Eight, or How to Manifest Things at Disneyland. So let's, let's talk about what the hell are we talking about right now. So number one is ceremony. Uh, it, if you've been following us for the last few weeks, few months, we've been, really, we've been talking a lot about this new book, The Power of Eight. It's a book by Lynn McTaggart, and she's a good friend of our, our boyfriend, Joey D, Dr. Joe Dispenza. And she studies basically the power of intention, the power of prayer, the power of um, a group of people coming together with the same uh, purpose, right? And so she takes a lot of prayer groups who are sending intentions to uh, war-torn areas to try and encourage peace and limit um, violence and studies the effects of, of prayer from any different denomination, whether it's Buddhist or Catholic or whatever. From any different angle, any different mm -hmm. way of doing it. Yeah, and why, why, like whether it works or not different scientifically. Different religions, different ceremonies, mm -hmm. different intentions. And one of the main experiments that she does is these little miracle groups, uh, where she takes about eight people and they have a group of people. They they have a group online and they basically all get online at the same time every week and they do this intention thing where they spend a few minutes on each person's intention. Uh, pretty much just meditating on it um, and the results of that have been really miraculous and so in our own coaching we have created power of eight groups we did that in our last challenge and some of those groups are still going even though the challenge is, is long totally. over um, and and they have created some amazing things we have our own power of eight group with um, some special people from our coaching program last year and we've all created some amazing, amazing things in less than two weeks yeah yeah and so you guys this this is this phenomenon, this power of eight thing, it's really catching on, and I suggest you get the book and check it out. Uh, but one of the things that I was listening to and reading about in the book, because I listen to an audio book and then I pick up the physical book and I'm like, ooh, I gotta read more about that, right? Or just reread it. And one of the things that she talked about that I really loved, aw, hey, Aditya, yeah, Disneyland is great. Um, one of the things she talked about in the book that I really loved was the idea of, um, basically there's this researcher who's researching the power of ceremony. 
And his, what his results of the research was, what the, what it, what the um, data says, is essentially that it doesn't matter what the culture is that you're in. Um, it could be Catholic, it could be Native American, it could be Western medicine. If there is an element of um, ceremony, ritual, pageantry, costumes, he basically said the more intensely emotional the music is, the drums, the rhythm, the symbols, Involved the in the ceremony, the more it is, mm -hmm. the more the feathers and crystals and and yeah, the fun and jingle bells and smoke and yeah and fog and and the, lasers and the more that there is kind of, there's like a belief in something supernatural or something that's a higher authority than yourself that's going to come in and create change. It's going to come in and heal you. That's going to come in and reduce the violence and in, in the war in wherever in the world, you know, or whatever it is, whatever the intent is behind the ceremony. Um, basically what this research is suggesting is that it works because people believe it works. It works because of the placebo effect, because of the power of suggestion, essentially. Um, and the same thing happens with people who get chemo. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, there's a whole process to going to the hospital and, and you know, changing of a gown and, mm -hmm. and, and like, you know, just every, every little step. You can read about this even more in Joe Dispenza's work where he takes research that's done over the last hundred years in Western science about the placebo effect and about people who have had miraculous recoveries taking sugar pills because they believed that those sugar pills were going to make them get better. They believed that those sugar pills were going to heal their cancer. They were going to, you know, basically bring these people back from the brink of death. This has happened over and over and over again. What does that say? It says that your mindset and what you believe about yourself, if you believe you're gonna die, you're more likely to die. If you believe you're gonna live, you're more likely to live. That's just the way it works. Um, and the placebo effect is a powerful, powerful, powerful tool. And, and so, so <laughs> some of you might be going, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, and that yeah, but is your belief. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, there's always exceptions to the rule. Of course, you know, we're not discounting anybody's experiences. We're just sharing with you some of the research that we've read about through these books and experiences we've had in our own life as well with miraculous healing, miraculous recovery. Um, because we've seen it happen in front of our own eyes through the yoga that we do, through different techniques that we have. And so, essentially... There's actually no exceptions to the rule. <laughs> It's just you have to look at, you need to look at what happened in a different way and find the clues and, and unravel them. Yeah. And saying there's exceptions to the rule kind of disqualifies what we're saying. All right. You're right. You're right. You're right. I just know that there's all these people that are watching that are going, yeah, but what yeah, about, yeah, what about, what about, um, I, what I'm saying is I don't want to discount your pain or suffering that you may have been through. Fair. Um, because cancer's a bitch. Losing someone is a bitch. Losing your home was a bitch. Like, Whatever pain, suffering, loss that you've been through, um, we're not taking that away from you and we're not saying that you shouldn't feel bad about it and we're not saying that it was your fault. That's not what this is about. What it's about is, is the power of ceremony and the power of believing that something's going to heal you um, when there's no real logical reason why it should. And yet, these healings happen, right? So anyway, we're, we're, I'm reading about this stuff, I'm reading this to Kit while we're driving up to Disneyland. And as we're driving up to Disneyland, we're thinking, well, if you can make a ceremony out of anything and it works just because you have costumes and crystals and feathers and sage, then surely we can make ceremony out of Disneyland. Who's to say we can't make a ceremony out of Disneyland? And because you've got costumes and music and feathers and lights. Heightened and emotions. Heightened emotions and... And lots Belief in of magic. People being really high vibrational, right? excited, and and like. So we start saying. So I start thinking. You know. You know. In our in our tradition in forest yoga, we we um, use a uh, ceremony called fall, calling in the four directions. And essentially, um, in lots of different cultures all over the world, the four different cardinal directions: north, south, east, west each represent a different element of life. So you've got like the beginning of life, the end of life, childhood, adulthood. You've got fire, water, earth, air, you've got, you know, all different kinds of creatures that are related to the different directions. And it, it's different from culture to culture. You've got the Chinese four directions, you've got the Native American, all the different Native American tribes have different representations for the different four directions. So literally, it's, it's different from all over the world. 
And so I start re realizing that the different Disney characters could be put in the different directions. Mm -hmm. And so in the main tradition that we follow, uh, through Forest Yoga in general, um, the north is like winter or air. The east is fire and um, new beginnings. Uh, you know, things like the phoenix and, and birds. The south is water. And um, the south is really playful. And then the west is death. The west is also bear medicine and sunsets, the, the end of life. Right. So we just start calling in the Disney directions. We just start calling in the Disney direction. Right. But guys, can you guess who'd be in the north? Duh. The north is winter time. Elsa would be up in the north. Let Am it I go. right? Let it go. Moana's, Moana's in, in the, the south. south. Yes, yeah. and Ariel's in the south Elsa as well. Elsa in the north. Ariel in the south. <laughs> um, so Snow White in the north. Yeah, Snow White's totally in the north. And so who's in the east? We've got. Mulan. We're thinking that uh, the Lion, Lion King, King is in the, in the east. east. Mulan's in the east. Um, who else do we have here? Oh, uh, Pocahontas, I feel, is more westerly. Yeah, that She's is more west. of a west, that for west. sure. Um, and so, yeah, keep, keep chiming in, you guys. Whoever's watching, Tell us know your favorite who Disney character. And would you put in which direction? Oh, Cru Cruella de Vil is definitely Ooh, in the west. Yeah, yeah, a lot of the villains, I think, would be in the west, for yeah, sure. Yeah, west is a place of abundance. So, mm -hmm. so what are those, those Disney movies, or the, those characters that are just like, Totally opulent and, and Cinderella, and maybe. In. I Ooh. mean, so Cinderella is a transformation story, so Aladdin she could go, she could transition directions. Yeah, Aladdin's in the east for sure. Um, so, you guys, we could we could go on and on about this forever, and you could even relate it to non Disney characters if you wanted to. You could put Harry Potter in there. You could put you know whatever Finding Nemo, all the Pixar people. I guess some of those are Disney now too. Yeah. Um, but so so we're go just going on this theme, and we're going you know. Calling in the powers of the South, powers of Ariel and Ursula and King Triton and Sebastian the Crab. We call on you to bring in your, your powers of abundance to this Disney ceremony. And so we're walking around Disneyland, just taking it in as though it were a ceremony, just being just like joyful and free and just light and in sacred magic no matter where we were yeah and just bringing in and sharing it with people too we were talking to people we were like we you know, so spreading spreading laughter and joy and and um it was just it was so much fun and so we get to this ride the guardians of the galaxy and we realize guardians of the galaxy is totally all of the directions. It's like the guardians of the whole galaxy right so, so we're like ooh, this is a good one a whole Lisa, this is fantastic. <laughs> a whole guardians of all directions. A whole powers of all directions. Mm -hmm. Guardians of the galaxy. Mm -hmm. We call on you to invoke this Disney ceremony on our journey to a million dollars. <laughs> that's, that's what we said in line. Uh huh. And so, so we, we're basically requesting specifically of the, the magic and the ceremony of Disneyland uh, specifically the Guardians of the Galaxy ride to bring us abundance. And and so, we, we figured, you know, this is the way we manifest things anyways. We get in a heightened emotion, we declare what it is that we want, and we call it into ourselves, right? We call it into our lives. Because it's, if any of you follow the what we put out there, it's, there's this electromagnetic field that you emit through your emotions. Mm -hmm. And we're like, Yes. We're going to emit this field of calling in more abundance. And right? I've said a million dollars in two years, 2.2 mm -hmm. .2 years. Actually, mm -hmm. um, one of my coaches moved it to 1.8 years. <laughs> oh, no, my accountant moved it to 1.8 years. Okay. So, um, so, so we're, we're calling it in, and we, and we get on the ride, and sure enough, you guys, this ride is... Talk <laughs> about... Talk about ceremony and pageantry and costumes. Oh, it's so cool. All the people running the ride are in costume. You walk in and there's magical creatures everywhere. There's like a painting. Of, You're just um, fully immersed in a new realm. Of Jeff Goldblum is on the wall. There's like a painting of Jeff Goldblum. It's like this like alien guy. And like, I love him, you know. And we're just like so excited. And the line is about maybe 25 minutes long or something like that. We're immersed and in we're all just, like, four directions. <laughs> Like, we feel like we're in the magic, you know? And then, sure enough, we get on the ride. And this ride used to be the Tower of Terror, which just is basically, you, it's like you're in an elevator, but you're si sitting down. And it goes up, and it goes down. And it goes up, and it goes down. And it goes up, and it's down. And it, and it flings you up, and it pulls you down. And when that happens, you float above your seat. It's crazy. You're floating, and everything, like if you have a purse 
or chapstick in your hand, it would float up in front of your face. And you're just like, Ooh. and then it would just and stop. It, and then it pulls you down. And then the doors open like an elevator, and you see into what's happening. You know, like the Guardians in, of the in Galaxy. In different or levels the of the side. floor. Yeah. And at one point, it opened up really big, and you could see outside. all of Disneyland. All you could of see Disneyland, outside. You're at the top. You're at the top of the, top of the tower. And it's so, really cool to have this like like digital robotic experience going up and down and up and down mm -hmm. and all of a sudden it opens and there's all these mountains and, and like, sunlight Whoa! yeah and and just the whole universe at your fingertips and so on top of all of that it has really amazing 80s music playing the whole time because if you guys have seen guardians of the galaxy you know that, that there's a whole like 80s soundtrack right and apparently every time you ride the ride the song is different and so we had, the first time we wrote it, we had Pat Benatar hit me with your best shot. Hit me with your best shot. And it was just like, fire away. And everybody inside this ride is like dancing and giggling and screaming. And we're like, so oh my God, fun. this is so good. And it's surprising too, because then you would just like see these shots of all the Guardians of the Galaxy and then all of a sudden it drops you and you just freak out. Yeah, and so so this is our experiment of manifesting at Disneyland using literally whatever was around us that could create a sense of ceremony, a sense of uh, pageantry, a sense of ritual Magic or heightened ritual. emotions. And we get off the ride, and Kit pulls out his phone and opens it up. And there was a confirmation of a new client for 6000 bucks. Booyah! So, yeah. We didn't even know it was coming. We have one we had no spot idea. available in our coaching program, and technically the enrollment closed, it was closed. like a week ago. We were, we were kind uh, of We were thinking full. We're, we're full, we're full, but um, but we technically we had one spot open because we had an odd number of people. So we're like, okay, if one more, one more person wants to sign up, we we'll let them in. We might consider it. And sure enough, boom, there she is. Uh, just you know, waiting at, on a message on our phone when we got off the ride. And so we just freaked out. Um, and we were like, oh my God, what else could we make we, happen today? At Disneyland. And Manifestation Dis Disney. Manifestation freaking Disney. So we didn't, I mean, we, we, we manifested, we were like, our lives are so full right now. We couldn't think of anything else to manifest, honestly, because we're so freaking happy about everything right now. Um, but one thing that we wanted to manifest was a an unexpected conversation with a new person. Oh, we did say that, didn't we? Mm -hmm. That we um, two of those. That like creates a sacred connection. That creates creates a connection. Sure enough, we ended up having one of those conversations with somebody just at the hot tub at our hotel. Oh, that's um, really cool. Totally random. Just I totally mean, random. Father of two. He has an adopted airline pilot. Adopted daughter with my old name. Mm-hmm. What? Really weird. Yeah. So so anyway, uh, that's our story about manifesting at Disneyland. Uh, the next day we went to Harry Potter World, and um, I I don't know what do we we manifested short lines or something. You know what we gotta do. We what? gotta we gotta create. This is this is my dream. Okay, create a VIP elite level like small group of clients where twice a year or three times a year we go to Disney and we all manifest together. Who wants to come? Who wants to come? Wants to come. And included in that package is season tickets to Disneyland. Yes. Or at least a ticket to Disneyland. Depending. So we'll figure it out. We want to know, you guys, if you are going to Disneyland, or if you have something else near you that's that's like Disneyland, that's like a magical escape retreat that feels like you're stepping into another realm, that Ooh. feels like you're stepping into a ceremony where there's pageantry, there's costumes, there's there's you know uh, emotional music, like. Whatever this could or be, sound. this could be going to see a movie in the movie theater, this could be, could be going nature, to a planetarium, be. it could be going on a hike in the woods, it could be, um, it could be, uh, it could be the gay bar with all the flashing lights. In yeah, it. it could be the gay bar, it could be, um, like going to the salt cave, you know, where everybody's wearing like their uniform because they work at the salt cave. Like you could literally make ceremony wherever. It could be writing on the CTA, the, the more your morning commute. The public like, transit, yeah. Tell a fun adventurous story about how the, the train conductor or the, the, the ticket taker is giving you a ticket to your future. Mm -hmm. So we want to know where are you going to create ceremony in an unexpected place? This week type it in the comments we want to know where are you going to be creating an unexpected ceremony in your life in your life in an unexpected place this week type it in 
um, we want to know. And so just a reminder, you guys, you can make ceremony in your life anywhere, anywhere anytime. anytime. You could even do it in the hospital. This guy did. Oh, Audrey says the, the airport. airport. Yes. yes. Yeah, for well, sure. We've got a fun thing to tell you about the airport, Audrey. We'll tell you later. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Have a good week. And we'll see you next Monday. Bye, guys. Bye.